Hi. In today's mailbag video we have this LED lamp. This was sent to me free of charge by Lightake and this is a slightly unusual device. This is an RGB LED lamp. It also has some white LEDs in here and it also has a Bluetooth speaker. Um, so a little bit unusual. Um, I'm not really sure about the practicalities of having Bluetooth speakers in your lamp. I suppose it could be useful if you leave it turned on. I mean, one thing I was thinking was if um, we use this in Camden's nursery, maybe I'd play some uh, nursery rhymes, but we do have a, a little hi-fi in there anyway. Um, but this uh, retails for 19 US dollars. Um, and the specs are, there's a, there's a lot of wanky pictures. It looks like a, a Kickstarter campaign type thing. Um, but they have the specs here. So it's a overall 3 watt LED, um, it's just a 3 watt speaker, um, and then universal input voltage 50, 60 hertz, uh, 120 degrees viewing angle, and the white LEDs uh, have a colour temperature of 6520 Kelvin. Uh, got a red ratio, I'm not really sure, um, I guess that says how much of a red tint um, the colours have. Uh, colour rendering index uh, 70.9. Uh, 273 lumens uh, and then the luminous efficiency so 59 lumens per watt which actually seems quite reasonable uh, for, you know a, a lot of these LED lamps suggest that the luminous uh, efficiency is going to be in excess of 100 lumens per watt but uh, the LED may well be capable of those kind of figures at uh, reasonably low brightnesses but once you take into account the efficiency of the switch remote power supply or whatever electronics is in there to drive it it does end up dropping quite considerably uh, and then the e27 um, lamp holder so um, edison screw at the bottom here and then it supports bluetooth version 4 um, and then i'm not sure if this is um, so it suggests that there's only preset colors like white red purple yellow green light blue or uh, green uh, I don't know if you can mix the colours to make any colour that you want. If you look at the um, the pictures of the application, it implies that there's kind of a colour wheel that you can pick any colour from. Um, it may just mean that there's some presets here. So I've not tried this device. All I've done so far is just um, load some software um, onto uh, this old phone. Um, very slightly dodgy in that it's an unsigned application, so you can't download it through the Play Store you do have to um, download the APK, APK file um, and then allow untrusted apps on your phone. So um, I don't know if they'll uh, upgrade that capability so that it's on the Play Store. I don't see why um, it's not distributed on the Play Store unless it um, doesn't comply with something. I don't know, but this is this phone isn't connected to any network or anything now. Um, so we'll try uh, plugging it in. I've connected this one to the uh, this lamp holder to the isolation transformer and also to the power meter. Right, so I've turned off some of the lab lights, so we'll just turn on power to the LED lamp. And it looks like when you turn on power, it slowly dims up to a reasonably bright, uh, cold white color. So this is drawing about 4.6 watts from the mains, about 33 milliamps. Um, it doesn't seem insanely bright. Um, I'd put that on a par with maybe a 2 or 3 watt LED, it's certainly not um, the equivalent to something that was drawing 5 watts, so um, I did hear a little pop when it turned on like the um, the speaker is capacitively coupled to the amplifier, so it could be that the amplifier is running the full time for the speaker and drawing a bit of uh, extra current. Um, but it's reasonably bright, um, but yeah, a very cold white colour. So um, let's just um, bring over the phone with the application installed. I've not tried this, so uh, let's hope it works. So it wants to turn on Bluetooth. Yeah, that's fine. And it's found the, uh, the bulb. So I assume we just pair with it this way. So it's connected A to DP, which is the audio profile and serial port profile as well. So uh, they're obviously using a serial port profile to control the LEDs and then just the A2DP streaming protocol for audio. So um, it's uh, already gone to uh, an MP3 file which I loaded on hit here earlier. So yeah, that's reasonably loud. That's uh, full volume. It's a little bit tinny. 
uh, not the best audio quality. At kind of uh, this kind of volume, the quality is reasonable. It's certainly better than a mobile phone or something like that. Uh, I'm not really sure what whether it would be uh, usable as a you know a speaker if you had this in your light fitting. It's, it does seem like a slightly odd feature. Um, but certainly if you're just listening to some very ambient music or I imagine uh, a talk show or something like that wouldn't be too bad. The, um, the audio seems good enough to handle voices and that kind of thing. But you certainly wouldn't want to be uh, listening to music for a long time with this. I think it would uh, give you earache. Um, so there's another tab here uh, called Lamp. So we've got a couple of sliders here. So this looks like a, uh, a dimmer for the white. And we've got a slider here, which is for the colours. Oddly, it's it's set to the centre here, which should be white, and it's kind of displaying purple. Um, so yeah, we can choose any colour uh, on this colour wheel here. So if we pick a what should be the pure green, that's drawing about 3 watts from the mains. And the red is also drawing 3 watts from the mains. And so is the blue, that didn't change at all. Um, if we pick a turquoise, that's two LEDs on, that's drawing uh, about 5.2 watts. And orange is drawing 4.45. So um, a single LED seems to draw about 3 watts, and then as you um, add more colour to it, it uh, if you try and make purple on the colour wheel with the RGB LEDs, it's drawing 7 watts. So... So yeah, it's obviously got a separate set of LEDs for the white LEDs, um, you know, for just ambient light as opposed to uh, the coloured light. And then, uh, yeah, you can't have the white and the RGB LEDs on at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure what auto does, let's see. Has it got a light sensor? No, no idea. Unless it does something with the music. No, I'm not sure what auto does. It did flicker once there, but I think that was just as it was um, re-establishing uh, communications with the Bluetooth. We have another tab here, which is just turning it on and off. And it looks like you can uh, set timers I'm not sure um, whether the phone has to be in range to set the timers or whether um, it stores the time locally or something. I assume that the phone has to be within range and um, the Bluetooth uh, device basically tells it to turn on and off. Um, but I mean, that's relatively functional. The app doesn't seem, um, you know, perfectly designed. Uh, I'm really not sure what this auto thing does it. Yeah, no idea. Might have to play with that. Um, but I mean, it does function as a light. Yeah, it's a little bit glitchy. And this looks like it should be close to yellow, but it's uh, a very purpley colour. Okay, well, it's certainly functional as a um, as a ambient light and also as a white light. Um, but uh, let's have a look inside and see what it's actually got inside it. Right, so I just had to go at removing the dome with a pry tool, but it looks like it's got some, uh, it wants to twist off instead, so. There we go. Uh, yeah, so that uh, came off reasonably easily. Hopefully there's some isolation inside this lamp because uh, that did reveal the PCB quite easily. And you can see here we've got the ring of white LEDs, so um, they've got quite a, a uh, very yellow phosphor colour, so um, obviously these are the 6500 Kelvin white LEDs and then we've got some RGB LEDs, five of those in the middle. Uh, there's a couple of zero ohm links just here, so that's presumably just to help with routing of the PCB. Um, I imagine this is just a single sided board. Um, and then we've got a whole load of transistors, so um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they've probably got these configured as little constant current drivers in pairs um, and we've got enough there for RGB and then white. So yeah, I'd imagine these are being used just as little constant current drivers uh, but being driven uh, by a PWM waveform. Uh, and there's some screw holes down here so let me just grab a screwdriver 
um, and then it looks like this whole thing comes apart and we'll be able to see what's inside the, uh, the main part of the lamp. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's come completely loose and oh, we've actually got some connectors. Right, so here we've got the speaker, it's a 4 ohm 3 watt speaker. Uh, and then we've got the uh, the wires going through to the LEDs just gunked up uh, here to another connector. So um, this is all uh, metallic and it's actually quite warm just from that brief usage. Um, I'm not quite sure how long it would sustain kind of 8 watts dissipation uh, just with this uh, metallic heat sink. I guess if you've got audio playing actually it would help with the cooling because you'll get a bit of airflow. And then inside the lamp part itself... Um, so we've got, um, this looks like part of a uh, DC to DC, so the, oh yeah, there's some components on the back here, we'll have a look in a minute, we'll get this board out. Uh, there's clearly an antenna on the other side of this board, because there's a cutaway in the ground plane here. Uh, we've got a uh, MD25D80 just here. Uh, I think that's um, Serial Flash or EEPROM. Uh, certainly, uh, I think I recall seeing that part number on something else before. And then we've got a, uh, what's this, 14-pin uh, chip here. This has got the top scrubbed off, but it looks like the traces go straight to this header uh, that the uh, LEDs plugged into. So it looks like, um, yeah, based on this, it says LED plus and ground. So uh, this sends out um, the supply voltage to the LED board. And then we've got some uh, PWM outputs here. Uh, so this clearly is all the constant current circuitry. Uh, so this is just outputting a PWM signal to turn the LEDs on and off. So this is surrounded by, um, you know, a 32 kilohertz crystal here. So maybe this is a microcontroller, and maybe it does indeed um, do the timing function. So if you set a timer, as long as you didn't turn it off, um, maybe it does turn the uh, lamp on and off uh, as required because it's got the uh, 32 kilohertz crystal here. Um, yeah, let's take the board out and have a look at the other side. Okay, so we've got a, uh, a little Bluetooth chipset board here, and here you can see the trace antenna. So that's where that cutaway in the ground plane was. So, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, this is the speaker output, and I can see what looks like a Class D amplifier here in a little chip. And then we've got a, uh, yeah, a DC to DC converter here, which is... Um, you know, it's got this inductor here, uh, we've got the flyback diode here, switcher chip, and then some uh, big capacitors. So, um, yeah, so it does look like this is a, uh, a microcontroller here, and we've got some flash here, uh, and then we've got the Bluetooth. Uh, so this is just doing the, uh, when we saw it pair with the phone, it created an A2DP connection and also a serial port profile uh, connection. So um, you'll be doing the audio streaming through this straight onto that Class D chip and then the serial port will enumerate a serial port on here to communicate with this uh, microcontroller on this side of the board. And then it looks like we've just got a, uh, a power supply board at the bottom here. And the leads are pretty short. Um, but you might just be able to see in there. Um, you know, it's a reasonable construction. We've got a little transformer there. Got a nice chunky flyback diode, uh, some gold coloured capacitors, so that usually is an indication that they're low ESR. Um, not really a lot to say about that. You can see we've got a nice isolation gap along here, and yeah, it's maintained on the top side. So, um, yeah, so this is a low voltage side, and it's just being fed straight off here. Um, and then we've got our local regulation on this board, and then we've got a switcher chip here. <clears throat> so we've got a switcher chip here, uh, the bridge rectifier, um, and we saw the bulk capacitors maybe on the other side, um, and then the um, we've got the transformer across here. So we've got the three uh, connections here, and the um, you know, the secondary on this side. So that doesn't look too bad at all. I'm surprised at the uh, construction actually that it's got all these connectors, um, but uh, that seems. You know, reasonably constructed. It is quite expensive, I guess, at uh, $20. That's uh, pushing on the higher end of the price for an LED bulb, but it has got a reasonable amount of uh, electronics inside. I don't know if there's an API that would allow you to create your own app or anything like that. 
Um, I mean, imagine it's uh, considering it just creates a serial port connection to this board. I imagine it wouldn't be too difficult to create your own app um, that would be able to interface with this thing. But um, yeah, a slightly quirky item. I'm not uh, yeah not completely convinced about the uh, usability of having a speaker and a light bulb, but certainly as an ambient light with the RGB LEDs, uh, that's quite nice. The the white doesn't seem quite as bright as. Uh, the power being consumed, so 5 watts seems slightly excessive for the amount of brightness that it produced. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the RGB LED functionality, just being able to turn it on and off from your phone, if that's your thing, um, it's certainly uh, not a badly constructed unit. So a big thank you to uh, Lighttake for sending this to me, um, and I'll put a link for this item down below in the description. And just quickly as a follow-up to the uh, video on the signal generator. If anyone is looking to purchase one of those, I'm going to do a video later on this week um, just with a modification. So I'm going to create that linear power supply for it and we'll also have a look at the waveforms at higher frequency. Uh, but there is a discount code which will allow you to buy the product slightly cheaper and that's valid during May. So I'll put that in the link below and on the previous video. Uh, but I'll, um, I'll give the full details in the next video on the signal generator. So um, if you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, don't forget to leave some comments down below. And thanks for watching.